The following chapter is based on false events. Chapter 11, An Angel's Bliss and Loss. Delilah opened her eyes, feeling something thin peel away from her face. Blinking, she felt where the substance had stuck to her skin. It was her math book. You know how those always peel away from your face in the morning. <laughs> now she remembered. She had been doing her homework before falling asleep. How long was I asleep? She asked herself, wondering if someone would answer. About three hours, said Mrs. Roanhart, shouldering the bedroom door open, holding a laundry basket full of fresh clothes. Doing more women's work, I see. <laughs> Setting it aside, she came over and stroked Delilah's head. So you look at your hair done, so you're ready to go when Alistair gets here. Oh, right. Delilah went into the bathroom. Her face was still groggy with sleep, but a shower would remedy that. Delilah took longer than normal with the shower, letting the hot water run over her. <sighs> It reminded her of Alistair's warm body against hers. She wondered what the others were doing right now. Probably not thinking about Alistair. You know, probably working on homework after the day activity. Her dance group had gone to Emmeline's house and played all manners of games. Ping pong, old Mexico, Twister, and many others. Alistair hadn't attended for not wanting everyone to know his return. He was planning the dinner for that night. Delilah kept her date a secret, evasively answering all questions with, It's a surprise! And obviously none of her friends tried to pursue the question any further. She t finally turned off the water and dried herself off. Pulling on a button-up shirt and shorts, she sat down at her mirror and began curling the still damp hair. Twenty minutes later, her hair in curlers, Delilah looked at the clock. Quarter past four. Good timing. Grabbing the blow dryer, she began to finish up on her hair too. So let me get this straight. She woke up at like four or so in the afternoon, hopped in the shower real quick, and is just barely getting ready, so she doesn't have much of a life, I guess. She just wakes up at the crack of sundown, starts getting ready for her date. While waiting for her hair to dry, she began assembling her outfit for the dance. She had found a flowing forest green dress at a reasonable price, along with some matching high heels, all at Deseret Industries. She was not going to wear any jewelry except for her orichalca at Alistair's request. Delilah didn't mind. It meant she didn't have to worry about losing anything valuable while dancing. Oh, man, that means her orange alchem's worth nothing. Hmm. Pulling the hair colors out, Delilah now looked at the finished result. Her hair was in waves that stretched to her chest with a single tiny braid next to her face. Satisfied, Delilah began dressing. The dress fit well, as did the shoes, smoothing out any visible creases. Delilah slipped the orange alchem around her neck. It nestled onto her collarbone, gleaming brightly and gently pulsing in synchronization with her heart. The doorbell rang, making Delilah's heart quicken, the orichalcum pulsing more rapidly in response. Looking herself in the mirror for the last time, Delilah took a deep breath before going downstairs. She likes looking at herself in the mirror. You know, when she first wakes up, right before she goes to bed, it's like the first and last thing she likes to see in the day. At the foot of the stairs, Alistair stood in elaborate robes of dark green and gold. He's back in his favorite colors again, that scamp. These robes looked finer than the ones he wore normally. Even from a distance, Delilah could make up the intricate embroidery of white and scarlet thread interlacing along the edges of the fabric. Alistair was talking with Mr. and Mrs. Roanhart, laughing and chatting pleasantly. Delilah heard rather than felt her orange alchem pulse harder at the sight of Alistair. As though sensing this as well, Alistair turned up to look at her. His face was a mask of smooth serenity, but his eyes were overflowing with ecstasy. Dude, he's got drug-dispensing eyes. Delilah felt like her heart had leapt into her throat as she walked down the stairs. When she reached the bottom, Alistair bowed deeply. Delilah curtsied in return. I thought this hand fell down. Delilah's mother sighed. Alistair straightened up. I prefer to call myself old-fashioned, he said. Winking at Delilah, Delilah giggled, remembering Aunt Alistair's genuine age. She giggles, but person that just still makes me cringe the idea that he's like 150-year-old going out with a 16, 17-year-old. I'm quite speechless. I feel underdressed. Ha! said Alistair, examining her. Delilah blushed slightly. Alistair had a gift for flattery, but she took it in stride. Just one last touch, mused Alistair. From inside his robes, he extracted a single white rose. Putting Delilah in closer, he placed it in her hair. Perfect! he whispered as he stepped back. <laughs> okay. Delilah examined Alistair more closely. Alistair's orichalcum gleamed on his chest pulsing in rhythm of his own heart. Its beat was slower than Delilah's, either by his own patient composure or by Alistair's own internal build. Mr. Roanhart came forward and hugged Delilah. Have a wonderful time, he said, taking Alistair's hand. Keep her safe! 
I promise to bring her back safely, replied Alistair, saluting her father. It wasn't a salute Delilah had seen before. It only used one finger. Alistair had thumped his heart with his right fist and nodded. Alistair, <laughs> Alistair picked up a black cloak from the coat rack. He placed it around Delilah's shoulders, then held out her arm. Shall we go? Yeah, I think so, she said, taking the proffered arm.